Summary of the Nibelungen Lead A young princess who lives in Burgundy and is called by the name Kriemhild and she is known across the world for her good looks and charming personality. Kriemhild is related to famous kings Gunther, Jernot, and Giselher. These kings rule from Worms, which is next to the Rhine, and have many proud knights serve them. As a girl, Kriemhild chooses not to fall in love because it often brings both happiness and sadness. In the city of Xanten in the Netherlands, further down the Rhine, a beautiful and brave prince called Siegfried was recently made a knight. Siegfried learns about Kriemhild and wants to make love to her. He also wants to get his own land and castles. He goes to Worms with a group of loyal friends. Hagen, Gunther's servant, knows Siegfried as the powerful warrior who killed the Nibelung princes and took their huge treasure when he gets to Burgundy. Siegfried is also almost unbeatable because he bathed in dragon blood. When the Burgundian kings and their armies meet Siegfried, he tells them he is going to take everything they own. The kings convince him to settle the dispute in a fair way by sharing their wealth. For the next year, Siegfried stays at the court of Burgundy and privately pines for Kriemhild, even though he hasn't seen her yet. When kings from other countries say they will attack Burgundy, Siegfried offers to fight for Gunther. He leads the Burgundian army to a huge win and captures a lot of people. Because Kriemhild secretly likes Siegfried, she is happy to hear that he is safe and has won. Six weeks after the fight, there is a huge celebration of win, and Kriemhild's brothers set up a meeting for the two to finally meet. They want to work together. During the fair, Siegfried and Kriemhild spend time together in public, and their love for each other grows. At the same time, Gunther starts to love Brunhild, an Icelandic queen who is both beautiful and very strong. To win her love, a man has to beat her in three sports events or lose his head. Gunther promises Siegfried that he will marry Kriemhild if Siegfried helps him win these battles. Along with Hagen and his brother and fellow subject, Dankwart, the men set sail for Iceland. Before they get off the boat, Siegfried warns them that they need to make Brunhild think that he is Gunther's servant. Brunhild turns out to be a tough opponent. While Gunther does nothing, Siegfried puts on his magical cape that makes him invisible. This makes him stronger and lets him throw a javelin, a rock, and jump higher than Brunhild. Brunhild is angry when she thinks Gunther beats her, but it was actually Siegfried who did all of those things. She still agrees to marry him, though. Gunther is reminded of his promise by Siegfried when the group gets back to Burgundy. Siegfried and Kriemhild are then legally married. Brunhild starts to cry at the wedding feast when she sees Kriemhild sat in the seat of honor next to Siegfried. When Gunther asks Brunhild what's wrong, she says she's sad that Kriemhild needs to marry a mere liegeman and be put down. It's not something Gunther wants to talk about, and Brunhild says she won't marry Gunther until she knows the whole story. So, when Gunther tries to take her virginity that night, she gets very angry, ties him up, and hangs him from a wall nail. When Gunther tells Siegfried about how humiliated he feels the next day, Siegfried promises to calm down Gunther's tough wife for him. He wears his invisibility robe and wrestles Brunhild into submission. During the process, they almost kill each other. If Gunther finally sleeps with his wife, Brunhild will no longer be so strong, and she will be like any other woman. Siegfried and Kriemhild soon after return to his home country of the Netherlands, where he rules as king for ten years. Brunhild is still worried about Siegfried's marriage to Kriemhild. He sends messengers to Xanten because she begs him to ask them to a midsummer party. When the agents come back with the news that they were accepted, they show off the nice gifts Siegfried gave them, which makes Hagen want the Nibelung wealth. At first, the summer fair is fun, but one night, Kriemhild makes Brunhild angry by saying that Siegfried is equal to Gunther, and the two queens start fighting. Later, she goes into the church before Brunhild, which is rude for a liegewoman. In the worst insult, Kriemhild calls Brunhild Siegfried's lover and says that Siegfried, not Gunther, took her virginity. When Brunhild tells Gunther about the charge, he dodges it and doesn't make Siegfried swear to tell the truth. Later, when Hagen and the other vassals find out about this, they start making plans to kill Siegfried. 
Hagen says that Brunhild's honor is at risk. Gunther doesn't want to go with them, but he does. Hagen suggests that the men go on a shooting trip after Kriemhild casually tells him that Siegfried has a weak spot between his shoulder blades. While Siegfried is taking a drink at a spring after a fun day of sports, Hagen takes the chance to stab him through the weak spot. Siegfried dies quickly. When Hagen gets back to Worms, he puts Siegfried's body on the doorstep of Kriemhild's flat. Kriemhild quickly breaks down in tears when she finds his body, and she starts to think about getting revenge because she thinks the truth about what happened. It is proven that Hagen is guilty when he stands next to the coffin and miraculously makes Siegfried's wounds bleed again. After three and a half years, Kriemhild still hasn't talked to Gunther because of his part in Hagen's plan, and she still won't see Hagen. Hagen tells Gunther that he should make peace with his sister by saying that she might agree to bring back to Burgundy the Nibelung wealth, which is her inheritance. As soon as he does that, the huge treasure is taken to Worms. When Kriemhild gives her treasure to everyone, rich and poor, local and foreign, Hagen takes it carefully and throws the rest into the Rhine to keep it safe. The kings didn't do anything about it, but this made Kriemhild even more angry. After 13 years, Etzel, a pagan Hungarian king who has recently lost his wife, wants to marry Kriemhild. Rudiger, who is his subject and the Margrave of Pochlern in Austria, offers to go to Worms as Etzel's messenger. Rudiger tells Kriemhild about the king's plan, but she says no because she can't love another man and feels shameful about marrying a pagan. She can't help but want Etzel's money, though, and she sees that she might finally be able to get even with Hagen. She finally agrees, and they leave Burgundy for other countries. Etzel and Kriemhild have a fancy wedding in Vienna and then move into Etzel's fortress at Etzelnburg. Kriemhild is still sad about her first husband's death, even though she thinks he is even wealthier than Siegfried. That was seven years ago. Now she is very powerful and well-known in Hungary, and she has a son named Ortlieb. Her drive for payback hasn't changed at all, and she still doesn't like being forced to marry a pagan. She easily convinces Etzel to bring her relatives to a fair in the middle of summer, which gives her the chance she has been wanting for a long time. When the offer gets to Gunther's court, Hagen thinks it's a trick, but Giselher makes him go anyway by making him feel bad about it. During the trip, Hagen meets some water fairies who tell him that almost the whole Burgundian group will die in Hungary. Rudiger makes the group feel welcome in Pochlern, and he also takes them to Etzelnburg. Lord Dietrich goes out to tell the Burgundians that Kriemhild is still upset about Siegfried's death and plans to hurt them as soon as they enter Etzel's land. Kriemhild doesn't want to greet the Burgundians, won't meet Hagen, and wants to know where the Nibelung wealth is. On that same day, she sends her servants to attack Hagen twice, but Hagen and Volker both scare them away. The next day, Etzel's brother, Lord Blodelin, gets the knights to fight badly. At the same time, Kriemhild has Ortlieb brought to the feasting table. As soon as Hagen learns that the Burgundians have been attacked, he quickly cuts off the boy's head. There is a terrible fight, and the Hunnish heroes are killed. By dark, 20,000 more Huns had been killed, and the Burgundians asked Etzel to call off the fighting. Kriemhild steps in and says she can't be kind while Hagen is still living. Because her brothers won't give up Hagen, Kriemhild locks them all in the hall and sets fire to the whole thing. 600 guys make it through a scary night locked up in the hall. While looking at the killings that have happened on all sides, Rudiger is torn between his promise to serve Kriemhild and the ties of friendship that he has made with Gunther and his men. He finally picks up his sword and fights the Burgundians, even though he really doesn't want to. After a fierce battle, he and Jernot both die almost at the same time. Everyone is sad and upset. When Dietrich hears about it, he sends Hildebrand and his other men to look into it. Volker then starts a fight between them, which ends with the deaths of all but Hildebrand, Hagen, and Gunther. Dietrich, who is sad, goes up to Hagen and hurts him. He then ties Hagen up and gives him to Kriemhild, who is finally happy. Soon, he does the same thing to Gunther, but he tells Kriemhild not to kill either warrior. Kriemhild, on the other hand, finally gets what she wants. 
first, she gives Hagen one last chance to return her wealth. Then, she has Gunther killed, and finally, she kills Hagen herself. In turn, Hildebrand kills her before she can enjoy her victory. He, Dietrich, and Etzel are the only ones who remain alive. They are crying over the deaths of their kinsmen and vassals, as joy must always turn to sorrow in the end. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.